What's up, YouTubers? Welcome back to my channel. It's your mental health therapist, Toya, and today I am here to tell you how to keep that Holy Spirit strong. Now, earlier I posted a video about how to keep your body physically strong, which consisted of working out throughout the week. But today we're going to talk about fasting and consecration because that's the way to really build up and keep your Holy Spirit strong. The more you're able to deny your flesh of immediate gratification, the stronger your Holy Spirit will become. You have to remember, we're made in God's image. And with the world being so full of corruption, distractions, and evilness, it is easy for us to get pulled from our foundation in which we were created. So it's important to fast and to consecrate in order to stay connected to God and to keep that Holy Spirit strong. And with the new year being upon us, what better time and what better way to do it? Now there's a lot of different fasts you can do. Um, some do it for 21 days, some do it for five days. I personally fast once a quarter. The beginning of the year is 21 days. The other three quarters of the year is just five to seven days. But I wanna tell you a little bit about what consecration is. Consecration is to make or declare sacred, to set apart for the service of God, to devote a purpose in a very sincere manner. Really, it means to give priority over spiritual things instead of the physical things. So basically, you're intentionally avoiding those things that can be hindering your connection with God or taking away your focus from God. Let me tell you what some of those barriers may be that we might have to temporarily stop if only for 21, 5, 3, however many days. First thing is secular TV and even secular music. Now, your girl, I can't lie, I love some hip hop. Um, I love gospel, but I love some other genres of music that ain't necessarily qualified or classified as gospel. But I know, I can personally attest to when I don't listen to gospel and I listen to a lot of this secular music, I feel that spiritually. I feel my spiritual being becoming a little bit weaker. So to stay connected and closer to God during my fast, I definitely give up anything that any movies that are rated R, some of these PG movies I even give up, and I replace that more with movies that are biblical or series that are biblical. Definitely replace it more with reading the Bible, with music, stop the secular music, and I replace that with a lot of gospel. And it is some really great gospel artists out here from rap, to you know your slower music but I definitely stop those things because that is something that can be hindering you know your eye gates and your ear gates things can come in through that that influences you so your spirit is being affected by those things and that is something I definitely give up during my fast because I want to get as close and as connected to God as I possibly can get another thing to give up social media Social media can be a huge distraction. Social media can have you start comparing your life to other people, start having expectations of people. Why well, haven't they liked my stuff yet? And just, it can get so distracted and away from the purpose of what God wants you to focus on. And a lot of what's on social media, not all, but a lot, don't even mention God, has nothing to do with God, has nothing to do with his word, has nothing to do with the fruits of the spirit. So it can be really distracting. I mean, if you want to get closer to God, you got to surround yourself with those things and those people that are godly, spiritual, you know, something that can help you stay connected. Social media, if it's not helping you stay connected, get rid of it. Another one is secular entertainment. Now I gave this up a long time ago. This was never really my thing, but I know each person walk is different and until you're ready to give up something, you're not gonna give it up. So at least if you gotta pause it so you can get closer and hear from God on how he wanna deal with you in those areas, so be it. The secular entertainment, I'm talking about clubs and parties and places that you probably really shouldn't be anyway. But you know, when you're there, there's a lot of things going on, smoking, drinking, cursing, backbiting and all kind of crazy stuff separate yourself from that that is not building up your holy spirit that's like making it weaker it's like kryptonite if you know anything about superman those type of secular worldly things it's like kryptonite to the holy spirit so if we're trying to keep our holy spirit strong again we have to minimize those things that that hinder it that hurts it that takes away from it that distracts us or that's full of evil another thing is chasing the bag now that's not a bad thing we all gotta make money we all gotta eat we all gotta live but sometimes we can overwork ourselves. We can get so focused on trying to make money that instead of going to church, instead of going to Bible study, instead of doing something spiritual that keeps us connected, we'll just sign up for that overtime. We'll just work a little bit more because we got all of these goals and vacations and items that we want to buy that we can't take with us. 
um, vacations. I love that. I like nice things and I like creating nice memories too in nice exotic places. But you can't let that trump or take over you getting closer to God and being connected to God. So if chasing the bag and getting that money is stopping you from really connecting to God, you know, maybe slow that down a little bit so you can really hear from him and he can tell you what to do and how to deal with you in those type of areas. And overeating, that is a big one when it comes to consecrating and fast. And that's one of the easiest but hardest things to sometimes give up. When I fast, you know, there's a lot of different ways you can do it. I know some people that wake up at 6 a.m. and won't eat anything until 6 p.m. And then after 6 p.m., they still have a limited amount of things that they are allowed to eat. For me, it's, you know, not eating at all until 4 p.m. 4 p.m. is one meal and I still have things I can't have during my fast, which is like no sugar, no caffeine, you know, soda, things of that nature but overeating or giving up those things that aren't good for the body anyway these are all ways that you can really strengthen your holy spirit but the key thing is to not just stop those things because we're not not eating to lose weight we're not not going to clubs because we just don't feel like being around people we're replacing that with something that is going to be spiritually uplifting like i stated earlier if that's listening to more gospel if that's attending church a little bit more maybe going to that midweek service in addition to sunday if that's praying a little bit more yourself watching those spiritual movies or sitcoms things of that nature something that will teach you about god that those are the things you want to do that is how you strengthen up your holy spirit so now I'm gonna give you a few pointers on how to fast or how to consecrate. Again, take the things that work for you. If you've never done a fast before, you know, try it out for a shorter amount of time. It's not the easiest thing, but it's definitely not the hardest. But some key things that you could do when you're starting a fast. Number one, pick the duration of time you're gonna do it. Will it be three days, five days, 14, 21, however long, God has spoken to you or that you feel like you're willing to try to do it, pick that duration. Set a time in mind before you even start on how many days you're gonna be participating in this fast. Number two, decide what you're gonna give up. Every time before I start my fast, I have my little book and I write down exactly what it is I'm gonna do and exactly what it is I'm not gonna do so I can be reminded. We can get so used to doing things. It's easy when you're on a fast, when you first start to grab that food or grab that piece of candy because you're forgetting that you're on that fast. So I write a list and I make sure I remind myself, look, these are the things you can do. These are the things you won't do during your 21 or seven day fast. So my second advice is to write down exactly what you're willing to give up and what you're gonna replace it with, which is my number three suggestion. Decide what spiritual activities you're gonna replace with these otherwise maybe secular activities or eating, we ain't gonna call that a secular activity, but instead of eating that second or third meal, what will you do instead? Decide what activities you're gonna do that's gonna replace what you would otherwise be doing. So you won't just be sitting up there bored. The devil is gonna come strong, you're gonna be so tempted, it's gonna be times where when you fast it, you gonna crave for things that you ain't craved for in forever because the flesh is gonna act up, but you have to get it under control. Again, we wanna deny the flesh so our Holy Spirit can grow and be strong. Number four, schedule what time you are gonna pray and you are going to read the Bible. But I know we all can relate where we got good intentions to do things, but then we look up a month later and we still ain't done it yet. The same thing can happen when you fast. So decide if it's gonna be a 6 a.m. prayer time for you, quiet time to meditate, to focus on God, to read the Bible. Will it be at 4 p.m., right when you get off of work or right before you eat your one meal? But pick a set time that you're gonna dedicate to reading and praying so that way you can be consistent with it. Maybe it's a behavior you can keep up with even after your fast. And number five, decide what it is you're gonna be praying for. During your fast and consecration, let your requests be known to God. Pray for not only the things you want, but pray for others. Pray for your community. Pray for our political leaders. Lord knows that they can use it. Decide, make a prayer list, and every day pray for what is on your prayer list, be it if it's health, if it's finances, if it's for your children, or if it's for other family members. But Decide what it is you're gonna pray for so you can diligently seek him during your fast. If you complete your fast, no matter how long you decide to complete this fast, if you complete it, you will feel the difference. I wanna to read to you a couple of scriptures out of Isaiah 58. Really, I want you to go back and read Isaiah 58, six to 11. 
but to not read all of that to you right now I just want to read pieces of that starting with Isaiah 58 verse 6 it says is this not the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness to undo the heavy burdens and to let the oppressed go free and that ye break every yoke I'm gonna jump down to 9 that says then shalt they call and the Lord shall answer Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here I am. If thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, the putting forth of the finger, and speaking vanity. And then I also want to read to you 11. And the Lord shall guide thee continually, and satisfy thy soul in drought, and make fat thy bones, and thou shalt be like a watered garden, and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. Go back and read Isaiah 58 if you can. It really speaks to us and it tells us the importance of fasting and how God will hear from us. And while that process is going on, your Holy Spirit is getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Thanks for tuning in. Subscribe, hit the like button, hit the bell, and I'll talk to you soon. Stay blessed.